In the last lecture, we had uh, started uh, discussing about the inverted Wishart distribution and uh, we had uh, proved an important result that uh, if A has got a Wishart distribution Wishart M N sigma, sigma is positive definite, then expectation of A inverse, A inverse was defined to be the inverted Wishart distribution. So, expectation of A inverse was equal to sigma inverse that divided by N minus M minus 1. Now, we will use this particular result that we had derived in the last lecture in order to get to an unbiased estimator of uh, sigma inverse when we have a random sampling from a multivariate normal distribution. That is, suppose we have got the following setup. Suppose we have x1, x2, xn, a random sample from a multivariate normal distribution with a mean vector mu and a covariance matrix sigma. Then what is an unbiased estimator of the sigma inverse matrix as one can feel that it is basically going to be based on this particular result that we had derived. Now, what do we know when we have a random sampling x1, x2, xn from a multivariate normal distribution which is given by multivariate normal m mu sigma. Sigma of course is a positive definite matrix. Then we know that n minus 1 s, let me still write it as s n minus 1 to indicate that this is the sample variance covariance matrix with a divisor n minus 1. This is given by i equal to 1, 2 up to n x i minus x bar into x i minus x bar, it is transpose. And this we had seen from the result proved in the last lecture that this has got a Wishart distribution on m dimension with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and an associated variance covariance matrix as a sigma. So, this would imply by this result out here that expectation of the inverse of this Wishart matrix that is expectation of n minus 1 as n minus 1 inverse of this because we require expectation of the inverse of the Wishart matrix that is the inverted Wishart. This would be given by sigma inverse whatever is the associated variance covariance matrix here the associated variance covariance matrix is sigma. So, this divided by we had here n minus m minus 1. So, n is the degrees of freedom of the Wishart distribution here that is n minus 1. So, that we will have this as n minus 1 this minus m minus 1. So, that this is equal to sigma inverse this divided by n minus m minus 2. So, this would imply further that this expectation of now we have here inverse of this quantity. So, we will have s n minus 1 inverse of it that divided by n minus 1 this is equal to this sigma inverse divided by n minus m minus 2 and what does that lead us to? This would imply that expectation of this n minus m minus 2 what we have on the right hand side that divided by n minus 1 times s n minus 1 inverse that is equal to sigma inverse. So, this would imply further that this n minus m minus 2 that divided by n minus 1 this constant multiplied times s n minus 1 inverse matrix is an unbiased estimator of sigma inverse. So, we have the desired quantity that we have obtained a matrix which gives us which is an unbiased estimator of the sigma inverse matrix. So, that is a simple result. Now, we move on to Hotelling's t square distribution which is the multivariate generalization of the student's t distribution for the univariate setup, Hotelings t square distribution. Let me first give the definition of what a Hotelings t square distribution is. Suppose we have got a Wishart distribution, suppose S follows 
a Wishart distribution, Wishart M N sigma and D B A random. Now, this S of course is any random matrix which is of the order that it is M by M and let D be a random vector M by 1 which has got a multivariate normal distribution, multivariate normal M dimensional with a mean vector as say delta vector and a covariance matrix given by C inverse sigma where C is a scalar constant, C is a scalar constant and suppose we further have S and D are independently distributed. These two are independently distributed. Then, Hotelings T square distribution is defined in the following way. Hotelings T square is defined as T square which is equal to C times N times D prime S inverse D. Now, this is what is the Hotelings T squared uh, Hotelings T square statistic. Hotelings T square on N degrees of freedom. So, this has got a Hotelings T square distribution on N degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom what we have here n is associated with the degrees of freedom of the associated Wishart distribution which comes as a constituent part of this Hotelings T squared distribution. Now, uh, the thing to be noted here is that we are just looking at two sets of random variable. One is a random matrix, another one is a random vector and we have a Wishart distribution of the random matrix and we have a multivariate normal distribution of the random vector and critically we would require independence of this random matrix S and this random vector D. Now, the Hotelings T square distribution of course is in a very important distribution in multivariate distribution theory. As I said that uh, this Hotelings T square is the generalization of uh, the usual student's T distribution in case of an univariate distribution. So, this is going to solve or rather the, this is going to be used in problems similar to what we had used uh, say a student's T distribution in case of univariate uh, normal distribution theory. But before we can use that let uh, me just uh, try to look at what is going to be the distribution of this T square statistic. So, in order to get to the distribution of T what we do is we go in two steps in order to get to the distribution. Now, first observe that given D, we will have this distribution D prime sigma inverse D, this divided by D prime S inverse D. Now, this is a quantity which we had introduced in the last lecture and we know that this has got a central chi square distribution on n minus m minus 1 degrees of freedom and is independent of and is independent of this d vector. We had derived this particular distribution taking it uh, first as a conditional distribution because once we say that uh, observe that given d that is conditioned on d being a given vector, we will have the distribution of this to be a central chi square on n minus m minus 1 degrees of freedom and that is independent of d. It does not depend on the particular choice of fixing of d and hence the unconditional distribution which is this d prime sigma inverse d divided by d prime s inverse d has got a chi square distribution on n minus m minus 1, a central chi square distribution. Now, further we have this D random vector to have a multivariate normal distribution, multivariate normal M delta C is a scalar constant remember C inverse sigma. 
Now, from the results of the quadratic forms associated with a multivariate normal distribution, what we can say is the following, that this d prime c inverse sigma, this is the covariance matrix, inverse of that, that multiplied by d, this is going to have what distribution? This is a quadratic form in d. So, this will have a non-central chi-square, a chi prime square on the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom would be the full of this particular matrix. So, it's the degrees of freedom is m and the non-centrality parameters say that is given by tau square. So, this is a non-central chi-square on m on m degrees of freedom and with a non-centrality parameter with a non-centrality parameter tau square and what is that tau square? The tau square term is going to be given by delta prime c prime sigma the inverse of it that multiplied by this delta that is in other words, this non-centrality parameter here is just c times c, a constant, scalar constant, delta prime, sigma inverse, delta. Now, this quantity here, this random variable is going to have a central chi-square distribution if we have this tau square to be equal to 0. Only under that particular condition, this will have a central chi-square distribution. Now, an important thing to note here at this particular point is that we have the distribution of this to have a chi-square distribution, which is independent of this d, the random vector, which is having a multivariate normal distribution. Now, using that uh, random vector d, which is having a multivariate normal distribution here, the quadratic form what we have here has got a chi-square distribution and non-central chi-square. Now, whatever be that, the important thing is that since this quantity here is independent of d and so will be this independent of the quantity with which we have obtained this non-central chi-square. So, what can we say? This will imply that this d prime, then we have that inverse of that quantity which is c sigma inverse d, that was the term there, is independent of the term which we had first defined that is d prime sigma inverse d that divided by d prime s inverse d. Why is that so? Because this is based on that d vector which is independent of this quantity which is having a central chi-square and then if we have that anything that is derived from that d vector would naturally become independent of this quantity here. Now, using that and the fact that this has got a non-central chi-square on m degrees of freedom and a non-centrality parameter as tau square and this has a central chi-square, we can frame the following uh, statistic. This would imply that this c d prime sigma inverse d, this is having a non-central chi-square on m degrees of freedom. So, we have this chi-square, non-central chi-square divided by its degrees of freedom, that divided by the second chi-square, which is independent of the first chi-square critically, d prime sigma inverse d, this divided by d prime s inverse d. So, this is the second chi-square and this divided by its degrees of freedom, what was it? It was n minus m this is going to have a chi-square on n minus m plus 1 actually, not minus 1. This is chi-square on n minus m plus 1 degrees of freedom. So, what we have here is this n minus m plus 1 degrees of freedom. This would follow what distribution? Now, this is a chi-square random variant, a non-central chi-square random variant on m degrees of freedom. So, we have made that chi-square divided by its degrees of freedom, chi-square divided by its degrees of freedom. The two are independent. So, this will have a non-central f distribution on the degrees of freedom which is m n minus m 
plus 1 and the non-centrality parameter of this non-central f distribution would be same as the non-centrality parameter of this numerator chi-square which is a non-central chi-square distribution. So this is a non-central f distribution on m n minus m plus 1 the two degrees of freedom associated with this and a non centrality parameter tau square. Now, tau square is what we had written out here, which is c times delta prime sigma inverse delta, right. So, in order to get to this statistics distribution, what we have used is the fact that this quantity here follows a chi square on n minus m plus 1 degrees of freedom given d and also since it is independent of the particular choice of d the unconditional distribution of d prime sigma inverse d divided by d prime s inverse d follows a central chi square on n minus m plus 1 degrees of freedom and that is going to be independent of this second chi square which is c d prime sigma inverse d which is a non central chi square so using this central and the non-central chi-square, we frame this particular ratio, which is having a non-central f distribution on the degrees of freedom and the non-centrality parameters as given above. Now, if we simplify this particular term, what we'll be getting is this term cancelling out d prime sigma inverse d. So we will have this as c d prime s inverse d, and this multiplied by n minus m plus 1 that divided by m this follows this f prime the non central f distribution on m n minus m plus 1 degrees of freedom and the non centrality parameter equal to tau square now it's easy to see that what is the relationship between this statistic and the t square statistic what was t square statistic we had defined the t square statistic as c times n n was the degrees of freedom of the associated Wishart distribution. So, c times n d prime s inverse d. Let me go back to that particular definition. t square was defined as c n d prime s inverse d. And hence, if we have obtained the distribution of this quantity, we have obtained the distribution of t square. That is, what we will be having is t square by n. t square by n would be just c times d prime s inverse d. So, it is t square by m into n minus m plus 1 divided by m. This would follow that non-central f distribution m n minus m plus 1 and a non-centrality parameter as that equal to tau square. So, this is the desired distribution of our Hotelling's t square statistic. Now, let us look at applications of this Hotelings t-square statistic, applications of t-square statistic and how, wh where actually this statistic is going to be used. Now, suppose we have a multivariate normal distribution, say we have a multivariate normal distribution n p mu sigma say, sigma is positive definite both this mu and a sigma are unknown. So, we have this particular setup. Now, under such a circumstances, suppose we have a null hypothesis H naught being framed as mu equal to any specified vector mu naught. This is to be tested against an alternate hypothesis H A, which says that mu is not equal to mu naught. So, this is a type of testing which we very frequently come across in multivariate uh, theory, where we are looking at this mu vector to be tested as taking this specified value of mu naught. Mu naught vector is of course, specified. So, in order to test this, what we do is we take a random sample as in univariate theory. So, x1, x2, xn be a random sample from this multivariate distribution, multivariate normal m mu sigma 
and then we will have to use this x1, x2, xn in order to test this null hypothesis against this alternate hypothesis. What do we know about this random sampling? We know the following fact that x bar, the sample mean vector, has got a multivariate to normal distribution with a mean vector as mu and a covariance matrix as sigma by n and about the variance covariance matrix say this s is sn minus 1 I'll drop this subscript n minus 1 we will say that this wherever I have this s it's basically denoting the sample variance covariance matrix with the divisor n minus 1 so n minus 1 s has got a Wishart distribution Wishart m on n minus 1 degrees of freedom and an associated variance covariance matrix as sigma and what is more about these two statistic is that x bar and s are independent. So this is what we have already proved from uh, uh, concerning random sampling from a multivariate normal distribution. Now can we use these two information in order to get to a Hotelings t square distribution and then frame the testing procedure for testing this null hypothesis against this alternate hypothesis? Yes, because if we look back at the definition of Hotelings t square, we would require a Wishart distribution, we would require a multivariate normal distribution, and we would require independence of the two. So what we have to use is that, is the following, we may recall the theory that we have just now learned is that if S follows Wishart M N sigma, I'll just write it once again, and this D is another random vector which is having a multivariate normal M. Let me write it in the notation that I had in introduced first up. So this was a delta C inverse sigma, and if we have these two to be independent, then the Hotelings t square statistic was defined as c times n d prime s inverse d. So this was Hotelings t square on n degrees of freedom and furthermore the quantity which was t square by n, n minus m plus 1 divided by m, this was shown to have a non-central chi-square on m, n minus m plus 1 degrees of freedom and a non-centrality parameter equal to tau square where this tau square is equal to c delta prime sigma inverse delta. So this is the fundamental result that we have uh, stated uh, today and proved a part of it about the Hotelings t square distribution. So we have here two constituent parts which is this having a multivariate normal distribution and this having a Wishart distribution and they are independent so this falls perfectly in line with this setup. So for the random sampling we will have the t square statistic to be given by c times n. Now let me uh, write that statement once again here so that it would be easy for us to see why, why the parameters are that. This was having a multivariate normal distribution with a mean vector mu and a covariance matrix as sigma by n and our n minus 1 s, s n minus 1 actually, was having a Wishart distribution on n minus 1 degrees of freedom and an associated variance covariance matrix as sigma. So this falls in line with this particular definition. So we will have this t squared statistic being given by c times n. Now what is c here? c inverse is n inverse. So c is our n and what is our n? n in this definition of the Hotelings t square is the degrees of freedom is the degrees of freedom associated with the Wishart distribution. The degrees of freedom corresponding to our multivariate normal distribution is n minus 1. So this basically is the C in this definition of Hotelings t square and this is the degrees of freedom of the associated Wishart distribution which was given by this n. Now what is d prime in our case? It is x transpose prime. 
x transpose prime and this times s inverse. Now, what is our s inverse? This is our, what I will do is I will just make this first as this quantity. This is n minus 1 s whole inverse. This is n minus 1 s whole inverse x bar, right. So, this is what is the counterpart of this quantity for the random sampling here. Now, this is going to have a non-central f distribution, constant multiplier of that. What I will do is that since our null hypothesis is mu equal to mu naught, since our null hypothesis is mu equal to mu naught, now we know that if we have a null hypothesis, then we will have to look at the distribution of the test statistic under the null hypothesis and hence we have to bring in this particular mu, e uh, mu equal to mu naught quantity somewhere here and that we will do out here which is mu not equal to mu naught is the alternate hypothesis. So, if we define this quantity mu naught remember is a known quantity. So, x bar minus mu naught what is the distribution of this? This is going to have a multivariate normal distribution, multivariate normal m and the mean vector would be 0 under only the null hypothesis and the sigma by n as the covariance matrix this under h naught. Now, if that is not under h naught, then what would be the mean vector for this x bar minus mu naught statistic? It would be mu minus mu naught because expectation of x bar would be equal to mu and under the null hypothesis only that mu is equal to mu naught. So, under the null hypothesis we will have this to be a null vector and sigma by n to be the associated covariance matrix. Nothing changes as far as the sample variance covariance matrix is concerned. We will have that to have a Wishart distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and an associated variance covariance matrix sigma. So, we will have this Hotelings t square distribution, uh, Hotelings t square statistic rather, defined in terms of this new vector which is centered in order to take care of this uh, under the null hypothesis uh, condition. So, what we will be having here is once again c, c remains n and n is the degrees of freedom. So, it is n minus 1. So, we will have this n into n minus 1 then d prime would now the role of the d prime, d, d prime will now be played by this x bar minus mu naught quantity. So, it is x bar minus mu naught transpose. Then the Wishart distributions inverse n minus 1 s whole inverse times x bar minus mu naught. So, what we see is that this n minus 1 term cancels with this one and what we have is this n times x bar minus mu naught prime s inverse x bar minus mu naught in a neat form. Now, this would further imply from the distribution of this t square statistic that this t square divided by n, n in the previous setup was the degrees of freedom. So, we will have that as n minus 1 this into n. Now, the role of n is played by n minus 1. So, we will have that n minus 1 minus m plus 1 that divided by m the dimension. This would follow an f distribution f prime distribution with degrees of freedom as m. Now, what is this equal to? This is just equal to n minus m and a non-centrality parameter equal to tau square. Now, this non-centrality parameter tau square, remember, was associated with the mean of the associated multivariate normal distribution. So, this is a null vector here. So, delta prime inverse of this particular matrix into delta would just be equal to 0 because delta the mean vector under the null hypothesis. So, tau square will be equal to 0 under 
the null hypothesis H naught. So we will have actually a central chi-square, a central F distribution as the null distribution. So this would imply that the T squared that we had defined, that divided by N minus 1 times, we have that as N minus 1 minus M plus 1, that divided by M. This follows a central F distribution on M, N minus M degrees of freedom under the null hypothesis H naught. So if we have that to be a central F distribution, we will use this distribution in order to reject or accept the null hypothesis. So the test for H naught against H A is to reject H naught if T square is large, that is, we will reject H naught at level alpha if our T square by N minus 1 into N minus M by M, if observed value of this, if observed value of this test statistic exceeds fm n minus m at the tabulated value at alpha percentage point. So this becomes finally the testing procedure for testing the null hypothesis that mu equal to mu naught against mu not equal to mu naught. So we look at the deviation x bar minus mu naught term here and then this basically serves as the test statistic which is having a an f distribution on m n minus m degrees of freedom under the null hypothesis and hence the test is that if the observed value of this test statistic exceeds the upper alpha percent tabulated value of an f distribution on m n minus 1 degrees of freedom, we reject the null hypothesis and accept H naught otherwise. So that is the testing which we have obtained using the Hotelings T-square distribution. Now this Hotelings T-square distribution I said uh, to start with is the multivariate generalization of univariate student's T distribution and hence we will uh, see shortly how this is generalizing or uh, under. Now uh, note that if M is equal to 1 then we will basically be having a, a univariate distribution because the dimensionality of the multivariate underlying multivariate distribution was m. So if we take m equal to 1, then this statistic reduces actually to a student's t statistic. Now suppose we have got m equal to 1, that is we are looking at univariate distribution theory. Suppose we have got m equal to 1, then what happens to this particular statistic out here? It is t squared. Now what was t squared? t square was given by this. Okay, So this is equal to in such a situation given by t square by n minus 1 into n minus m divided by m. So for the value of m equal to 1, this is equal to t square by n minus 1 then this is also n minus 1 divided by 1 and hence this is just equal to t square. And what is t square equal to? t square for m equal to 1 would be, let us look back once again at the form of t square, it is n times this particular quantity here. Now we have m equal to 1, so this x bar minus mu naught is a scalar quantity and what is S inverse if we have m equal to 1? S is the sample variance covariance matrix. If we have univariate distribution, then this is just the sample variance. So what we'll be having as t square is n times x bar minus mu naught whole square that divided by S square, where S square is the sample variance. So this would thus be given by n times x bar minus mu naught whole square that divided by S square. This will follow an F distribution on 1 that is M, N minus M is N minus 1 here and this is equal to what? This is a student's T distribution square 
on n minus 1 degrees of freedom, right? Because an F distribution on 1 n degrees of freedom is equivalent to a T square on the same degrees of freedom. So, we have got this and note that what we have here, which, which is uh, the value of the T square by n minus 1 into n minus m by m for the special case that we have univariate uh, theory. So, this is what we have and this the square root of this is precisely the student's T statistic that is what is used if we have x1, x2, xn a, an univariate, uh, a random sample from a univariate uh, normal distribution with a mean equal to mu and an unknown variance equal to sigma squared, then the square root of this basically or the square of that uh, if we have an F statistic is what is precisely used in case of an univariate distribution theory. So, this T n minus 1 is students T distribution on n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So, this implies that this Hotelings T square is generalization of this student's T distribution in the multivariate setup. Now, the testing procedure that we had framed was for a general mu equal to mu naught against mu equal to mu naught. As a special case, one can take this mu naught to be a null vector and in such a situation, the T square statistic would just be n times x bar transpose S inverse x bar and all other things remain exactly the same. So, for any specific choice of uh, mu naught vector, one can obtain this particular testing procedure. We will extend uh, this uh, Hotelings T square distribution or rather the testing procedure when we have uh, two, sam two multivariate normal population. But before that, let me just look at the following important thing, which is the relationship between this Hotelings T square and uh, a testing procedure, which is based on the likelihood ratio principle. So, the relationship between T square, the Hotelings T square and likelihood ratio is what is now the point of interest to us. Now, suppose we have the same setup as that of the multivariate normal distribution uh, random sampling. So, this is a random sample from a multivariate normal m mu sigma. Sigma is positive definite is unknown and mu is also unknown. So, suppose we have got this null hypothesis mu equal to a null vector. This is to be tested against the alternate hypothesis that mu is not equal to that null vector and we can do, uh, just now we have seen that this type of testing we can carry forward using the Hotelings T square distribution. Now, what we are now going to look at is what is the relationship of the T square statistic that uh, we had introduced with that of the general principle of the likelihood ratio. Now, in order to implement the likelihood ratio, what we would require is first the likelihood function. So, let us look at this likelihood function, the likelihood function L mu sigma. This given, I just write x, x is the matrix which contains x1, x2, xn. So, that is going to be given by, as we have seen earlier, 2 pi to the power minus mn by 2 determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2, then e to the power minus half trace of sigma inverse a minus n by 2 x bar minus mu transpose sigma inverse. I do not have any place to write this here. So, this is this x bar minus mu. So, that is what was the form of uh, or the simplified form of this likelihood function. So, this is the constant part 2 pi to the power minus m n by 2, then determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2 and then this as we had seen perhaps it would be better if I write the first form and then write this uh, simplified form. Uh, well, this basically is coming from here, this exponent in the first form would be L mu sigma, 
given x this is going to be equal to the constant is as it is minus m n by 2 determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2. So, this is m n by 2 determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2 and then in the exponent what we have to start with is minus half summation j equal to 1 to n x j minus mu transpose sigma inverse x j minus mu. And as we had seen when we were talking about sufficiency uh, concept and the related maximum likelihood estimation, we had seen that this particular likelihood function can be conveniently written in this particular form, where A of course is this matrix, where A is the sum of squares and the cross product matrix, that is A is summation J equal to 1 to up to N x j minus this x bar into x j minus this x bar transpose this matrix, right. So, if this is the likelihood function, then the likelihood ratio, uh, before even introducing the likelihood ratio, let me look at the spaces, this mu, the null hypothesis is mu equal to mu naught this is to be tested against the alternate hypothesis that this mu is not equal to mu naught. Now, let me denote by script theta the parameter space without any restriction. So, it is basically the set of all mu and sigmas such that mu belongs to r to the power m because we have got that as m dimension and then the sigma matrix is all possible positive definite matrices. And then we also look at this script theta naught, which is the parameter space under the null hypothesis. So, the parameter space script theta naught under the null hypothesis mu uh, h naught is going to be given by the set of all mu and uh, sigmas such that this mu is fixed at the null vector point and sigma is allowed to be any positive definite matrix. Now, under these two parameter spaces, the likelihood ratio is defined in the following way as usual. Likelihood ratio, this lambda, is going to be given by the ratio of the two supremums. So, supremum under script theta naught of this likelihood function L mu sigma I will just drop this condition on x just to keep it as L mu sigma that divided by supremum over the entire parameter space script theta of this likelihood function. So, this is the likelihood ratio that is what is going to be defined and the likelihood ratio test would reject the null hypothesis H naught in favor of the alternate hypothesis H A if this likelihood ratio is small because we are looking at the supremum of theta naught by supremum of theta. So, we will have to find out what is supremum under theta naught and what is the supremum under uh, the unrestricted supremum under the parameter space script theta. Now, in order to do that, we would require actually uh, what is the maximum likelihood estimates of the unknown parameters under the two setup. For the unrestricted uh, setup, for the unrestricted uh, setup, that is unrestricted is for script theta, we know the what the maximum likelihood estimators are. The maximum likelihood estimators are the following, maximum likelihood estimators are this mu hat is equal to x bar and this sigma hat maximum likelihood estimator is 1 upon n times a. We had derived this particular result earlier that these are the maximum likelihood estimators in case of a uh, multivariate normal distribution. Now, if we are looking at the supremum over script theta of this L mu sigma, then that would be obtained if we plug in these values 
as the corresponding maximum likelihood estimators and then see what is the form of this quantity now. So this would be the supremum of the likelihood function under script theta would be this constants will remain as it is and then we will have determinant of sigma hat to the power minus n by 2. So what would that be equal to? Sigma hat is going to be replaced by n inverse a to the power minus n by 2. So that's what is doing the uh, task of this sigma hat. Then e to the power minus half trace of sigma inverse a was the term which we had in the likelihood function. It was this as trace of sigma inverse a. So what would that be equal to? Sigma is n inverse a. So sigma hat inverse by invariance of the likelihood principle would be n times a inverse. So this is n times a inverse. This is for sigma and then we will have that a matrix coming as it is. And what happens to the second term? The second term is minus n by 2 x bar minus mu transpose sigma inverse x bar minus mu. Now at the point that mu is given the maximum likelihood point, so that would be x bar, so this term would vanish simply. So what we will be having is this term just for the supremized uh, or rather the supremum over script theta of this likelihood function. What is this going to be equal to A inverse A is going to be an identity matrix of order M. So the trace of that would just be Nm. So that this we can write as 2 pi to the power minus Mn by 2 and we can take this N inverse out from this particular determinant of N inverse A matrix and what will happen to the power of N n will get raised to the power m n by 2 because we have a negative sign here, we have a negative sign here and the order of this a matrix is m by m. So we will have this n raised to the power m n by 2 and then we will have e to the power minus half trace of n times i m so that would be n times m so that this is m n by 2. So this simple form is the supremum of the likelihood function at this script theta point, right? Now, we have to obtain also the supremum of this likelihood function under the restriction that h naught mu equal to mu naught. So, we will have to work out also that restricted MLE, restricted under the setup that h naught mu equal to a null vector. This of course will be uh, the same uh, procedure would be followed if we have instead of this null vector any other uh, specified vector mu naught to be the null hypothesis point. Now in order to find out the restricted MLE, we will have to look at the restricted likelihood. The restricted likelihood at the restricted likelihood would be actually L not sigma given x. So this is going to be equal to the constant 2 pi to the power minus m n by 2 remains as it is. Then we will have determinant of sigma all right to the power minus n by 2. We will have e to the power minus half trace of that sigma inverse a trace of sigma inverse a this. Uh, what I will do is I will take this minus half uh, this trace of sigma inverse A. Let me first write it, this trace of sigma inverse A, this minus n by 2 and then x bar minus mu transpose sigma inverse. Now under the restriction that h naught mu equal to mu naught, that mu is a null vector and hence what we will be having here is just x bar transpose sigma inverse x bar. So we can write this in this form that 2 pi to the power minus m n by 2 determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2. Then we will have e to the power if we take this minus half outside. Now note that we can put a trace out here. I will do this uh, calculation once more. This trace of sigma inverse a minus n by 2 
Now this is a scalar quantity and hence this quantity itself I can write trace of this term and once I write trace of this x transpose sigma inverse x then we can use the fact that trace a equal to trace of trace of a b equal to trace of b a and then take this x bar on this side using the trace result and then we will have this as trace of sigma inverse trace of sigma inverse x bar x bar transpose. So, we will have this term in a compact form as following which should help us in order to get to the maximum likelihood estimator by using the same logic as what we had used in order to get to the maximum likelihood estimator for the unrestricted setup. This will be minus half trace of sigma inverse the entire term is common. So, we will have that a plus now this minus half trace sigma inverse is out now then we will have n times x bar x bar transpose as this particular matrix. We can write this as 2 pi to the power minus m n by 2 determinant of sigma to the power minus n by 2 and e to the power minus half trace of sigma inverse of a matrix say which is equal to B where B is nothing but the matrix which is this one where we have this B matrix to be given by A plus n times x bar x bar transpose. Now note that this form that we have here is similar in nature to the form which we had to encounter in order to find out the unrestricted maximum likelihood estimator in case of a multivariate normal distribution. When we had unrestricted setup then we had to find out the maximum of such a, a similar quantity with A replaced by just this B, uh, uh, I am sorry, with this B just replaced by this A. Now the maximum likelihood estimator of sigma in such a situation was 1 upon n A. By using the same logic by uh, analogy actually what we can say is that from this expression here if I name this equation as 1 then the maximum likelihood estimator of sigma in the restricted setup would just be given by 1 upon n b. So, we will have this one implies using the same logic as that used in order to find out the maximum likelihood estimators uh, estimator of sigma in the unrestricted setup what we can say is that the MLE of sigma under the restriction under restricted setup is going to be given by sigma hat r say restricted that is equal to 1 upon n times b and what is that equal to? Let us plug back what b was equal to. So, it was equal to a plus n times it is in the random variable form x bar x bar transpose. So, that this is equal to just 1 upon n a plus x bar x bar transpose. So, this is the restricted maximum likelihood estimator and this is the only maximum likelihood estimator over which we are going to optimize, we are going to maximize rather because mu is given as mu naught. So, this would imply that the other part which is required which is a supremum under script theta naught, under script theta naught mu is given as mu naught and we have to find out the supremum of the likelihood L mu sigma at the point mu equal to mu naught. So, that we will just be using this in place of the previous matrix there. So, that this is thus equal to the constant remains as it is 2 pi to the power minus m n by 2. Determinant of sigma would be determinant of this quantity now n inverse a plus x bar x bar transpose whole raised to the power minus n by 2 and then we will have e to the power minus half. Let us see what that was equal to. 
So this was the restricted uh, likelihood. So if we plug in here, in place of uh, sigma, this quantity, what we'll be having is this as 1 upon this sigma inverse as n times b inverse. And thus, this would just once again be equal to the type of term that what we have. This is going to be n times trace of i m. And this thus would be equal to 2 pi to the power minus m n by 2. We can even take this n inverse outside. So we will have a term m here. n is basically taken out in order to have a similar expression as to that what we had for the restricted, uh, unrestricted maximized likelihood. So this will be an n raised to the power m n by 2. And that leaves us with this a plus n times x bar. Now this x bar is going to be small x bar because we have got the data out here. So we will have this written as small x bar, x bar transpose. And similarly, this would be the small x bar because this is in the likelihood uh, function, x bar, x bar transpose, whole raised to the power minus n by 2. And then we will have e to the power. This is going to give us m, m times m. So this is minus m n by 2. Right? Now we have both these parts which are required. So this is, say, star 1. This sits in the denominator of the likelihood ratio. If this is given star 1 number, then this is the other expression. This entire expression is what we would require in the numerator of the likelihood ratio. So this would imply that this lambda, which was given by supremum under script theta naught, of L mu sigma, this divided by the supremum, I think I should just write this in the center. So this lambda, the like likelihood ratio is given by this term here, which is supremum over this. So this is the supremum under the unrestricted setup, and this is the supremum under the restricted setup. So this thus, using star 1 and star 2, we can straight away write what is this using star 1, which was this term here, and star 2 equation, which was the restricted uh, supremum. What we get is this form of lambda, which is under the restriction. It's 2 pi to the power minus mn by 2 n to the power mn by 2. Then we have this determinant of, what was it? Determinant of a plus n times x bar, x bar transpose whole raised to the power minus n by 2. So a plus n times x bar, x bar transpose whole raised to the power minus n by 2. And then we had e to the power minus mn by 2. And in the denominator, we have that star 1 expression. The star 1 expression, remember, had a similar constant. These constants are exactly the same. And if we look back at what was star 1, uh, in the star 1, I just missed out this term here. This term was sitting here, so this term would come out here. So we will have this as determinant of a to the power minus n by 2 as well. So this term is this th this term comes in because this e to the power this term is here, so we'll have this as two pi to the power minus m n by two. Then we have n to the power m n by two, determinant of a to the power minus n by two, and e to the power minus m n by two. So that that is the correct expression of this star one. This term comes down here. So what we'll be having here is a determinant of a to the power minus n by 2. And then we will have e to the power minus mn by 2 term here. So a lot of terms actually cancel out. This term cancels out. This term cancels out with this one. This term cancels out with this one. So what we have is this simple form that lambda to the power 2 by n is going to be equal to, let's flip this two terms. 
this will be determinant of a this divided by determinant of a plus n times x bar x bar transpose the determinant of this term here in just this form. So, we will use this form this is the likelihood ratio lambda raised to the power 2 by n that is equal to determinant of a divided by determinant of a plus n times x bar x bar transpose. So, we will look at in the last uh, in the next lecture we will start with this particular form and see what is the correspondence of this likelihood ratio lambda and that of the Hotelling's t square distribution. Thank you.